Hello. Hello. How yes, are Hauke. you? Fine. That's good. Are you waiting here for me for the six minutes? Yeah, nobody else had come, so I was I was gonna wait a little longer, but uh, yeah, Kathy is out sh with a um a family emergency, so uh, oh she, oh she she could not make it this week. So how are you? Yeah, fine. That's good. And you? Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Uh, weather is not the most pleasant, but that is a January in Wisconsin, so. That kind of happens. Yeah, we are, so today was more or less the first day we got snow here, so yeah, it's, I put, I think not so cold, uh, like, so I, I was at CES last week, mm -hmm. and when I flew through Chicago, I think it's near you. Oh, yeah, yeah, a little, I'm, we're actually yeah, this, a little north, yeah. Yeah, I just looked onto my phone and saw that it's really cold there, uh, and I haven't it, left the airport. <laughs> it, it is very cold. How was CES? What was nice, yes. Yeah. Did yeah. A lot, of, a lot of good stuff happen, or? Yes, I haven't seen that much. Um, just uh, yeah, most of the time I've been uh, at our own um, <coughs> booth or suite, and so on the last day I had some time to look around. Yeah. There's there's a lot of weird stuff being sold. That's all I've gathered. <laughs> yes. You know, so you hear about some, you're like that. I don't know why that's a thing. That that doesn't need to exist. But who knows? It's weird. So yeah, I mean, there isn't isn't a whole lot of news from my end. Um, ordered all the uh, uh, most of the stuff that we're using for the first uh, test, uh, the uh, board co-op. Um, oh, nice. We will be getting that set up in the in probably uh, either next week, probably the week after, because uh, I'm still waiting for this to, all of it to, to get here. <laughs> but um, I, that seems to be moving forward. Um, not a whole lot else. I, so, uh, Cody, you are using the um, build farm stuff, which was uh, published by Qualcomm, or what's the first step? That yeah, we're going to be using the build farm stuff. The first step um, is uh, we're going to be using uh, we're going to set up one device. Um, it's it's going to be one of the Qualcomm development boards that they had sent me. Uh, we're going to make it remotely accessible using uh, some of the build farm uh, tools and um, some other things. We're probably going to have to build not not that much. And you're going to be able to access the uh, the router. Um, as well as an upstream and a downstream device and the power control for all of them. So you can, you know, restart them and stuff like that to see what happens. Um, and that will be uh, remotely accessible. So oh, nice. it, 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 we're, we're still trying to work through a couple problems. The big one is, is the fear of the bootloader because we, <laughs> we want to make sure that nobody can modify the bootloader. Um, that's the, that is the the biggest challenge, and we may have some possibilities, but we're um, the first one. I I have the fear that we may end up. We may just have to say people don't modify the bootloader. Um, yeah. Be because it's really hard to actually do. Unfortunately, some of the flash chips allow you to do it, um, but that's going to be a little bit um, difficult because it's like, well, you have to put a you have to put a high signal on this on this pin, and you know, you know, stand on your head, and you know, do all these crazy things, basically. Um, and uh, so, I have some worries that we may not get that as well as we had hoped. So um, there's the possibility to make it uh, to have a hardware-wide lock on the bootloader. How how, so how do you do that? I don't know. At least uh, for the Lantic device, we have a nice feature. Um, we can the boot warm so the code which is uh, in the chip uh, not on the flash but in the soc itself and mm -hmm. we can make this boot from serial so if the flash chip is completely broken so like someone flashed the wrong bootloader onto the board um, okay. we can just uh, place or remove a jumper and then the boot board will boot from serial then we have to 
uh, supplied some special images uh, for serial and then we can recover it even if the flash chip is completely broken or also for initially I don't know I don't think for initially but it's nice for development so when you break your bootloader uh, you can yeah. still recover pretty easily so it's about five that... minutes when you know what to do yeah the jumper that's not a bad idea a jumper could I don't be know done if we, if, we, if, if this hardware supports it, so it depends on the hardware. Some guys, at, of course, uh, Lantic implemented it some time ago, and uh, yes, yeah, it's a nice feature. I will have to look at the Qualcomm board we have. This is going to be the biggest problem we have with all of these because it, basically, my biggest concern is you're going to have people ex accessing it. And since they're remote, obviously we have to assume that they can't be trusted. And all they have to do is write over the bootloader and we're screwed. Then someone has yes. to manually go in and it just is totally impractical to use long term. Because people so, because I'm gonna have to go in and reinstall the bootloader every time. Yeah. So uh I think we should not, uh, if you just let uh, people, uh, like trusted people or some people, at least when they have registered uh, and they are manually uh, allowed to access this board, I think then it's not so much that you get uh, some people that want to screw up you, that want to screw you up. Uh, and if you do not admit uh, testing bootloaders on this device. Yeah, so I think well, bootloader let's... testing should be done on on uh, someone's desk when the board is next to some some next to the one that wants to test it. Yes, absolutely. And honestly, you're not going to have to do do that that much on most of these devices. Yes. I mean, <clears throat> the big thing is it's testing. You're testing OpenWRT. Yes. So I I only broke two of my boards some time ago uh, by flashing one. So they had the partition detection wasn't working correctly and it tried to override some partition which it should not override and then mm. the board doesn't boot, didn't boot anymore so someone fixed one of my boards and yeah the other one is still broken so I do not care really mm -hmm. but normally it doesn't happen that often that you break the bootloader at least when you not want to break it or want to work on the bootloader yeah that's the that's the problem if you you can overwrite the bootloader from inside OpenWRT, right? Yes. Okay, that's what I thought. I'm not forgetting that. So in most cases, we make the partition for the bootloader read-only. Uh, mostly also to, to make it harder for us to accidentally overwrite it. Mm -hmm. um, but if someone wants, wants to screw you up, uh, he can do it. Okay, yeah. Because these people are going to be flashing new versions of, or you know new versions of OpenWRT anyway, so I mean we're gonna, yeah, yeah. So we can mark it in the kernel that uh, it's a read-only partition and that you sh uh, that it should not write to it. But if you, fl you flash your own kernel, you can easily deactivate it. Even if you have yeah. root access, it's probably possible to deactivate this uh, uh, write protection. So the only yeah. thing that would really help you is some hardware wide protection. Yeah. That's the that's the big thing. Um Okay. That gives me an idea the jumper idea. I'm, I'm not yeah, sure. It, it, it depends on the hardware, so Of course. So you should Absolutely. probably ask them how to recover if a bootloader is broken. You should have a plan what to do then. Uh, and hope that you do not have to execute it that often. Yeah. Yeah, if, if this happens once a month, that might be feasible. My fear is we're going to have just some jerk get in there, and it's going to be literally, I'm going to be doing this every every 10 minutes. And I'm going to be like, this this isn't working if we do that. Yeah, um, yeah. So uh, we have to make, some, for my opinion, you should, uh, so that if people have to register before, and that they have mm -hmm. to, uh, that you have to manually give them access that they were allowed to do this. So if someone tries to... Yeah, tries to do it uh, to every time break it, you can just uh, not give him access anymore. Yep. That makes sense. Absolutely. Totally agree there. All right. Originally, it was we were trying to make this as open as possible, but yeah, I, un unless we could... If we, can, if we can lock down the bootloader, I feel that we can reasonably do that. 
the big question is, is that. And in the cases where we can't lock down the bootloader, yeah, we're going to have to have registered people because otherwise it's, it's too dangerous and there's too many problems. So if you make it completely open so that everybody can use it, you have the other problem that some people that want to install malware on these devices also are getting access and try to do that. So there is some malware, uh, at least there are some reports sometimes that 100,000 routers are affected by some malware. And I think the first internet-wide uh, scanning of the IPv4 range was also done by someone who wrote a malware running on routers and used them to scan the complete internet. No, I definitely that that's a concern. I don't. I feel that we can actually manage that risk on some level, because um, the router is not directly connected to the internet. Oh, okay, okay. Then it's um, a big problem. Yeah. It is. It's connected. Um, it has an uh, a Raspberry Pi that is uh, downstream that represents the downstream. A Raspberry Pi that represents the upstream, and then it's connected. Uh, the serial port is connected to um, a an, another Raspberry Pi. That oh, kind of, okay. So this thing doesn't have actual con connection to the internet. So it would have to somehow then break one of those somehow, and that okay. is more difficult. Um, but yeah, no, it, it is it is a concern. It, that it's, okay. the, the security side of this is is pre kind of the biggest challenge I think of the whole thing. Um, it's all manageable otherwise. Um, yeah. yeah, well, thank that, that helps, that helps me give me some ideas on thinking about this problem. Um, do you know if, if Lantique has boards that are devices that they'd be interested in, you know, submitting to this? I'm not saying we should do it right now. I mean, we're just, I'm just thinking long-term. Uh, yeah, probably Let's... yes. Probably okay. yes. So I haven't asked my management, but, uh. Yeah, it could be, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, we'll keep that in mind. I figured you would, but just thought I'd ask. Um, that's about all I've got from me. Um, there is a one discussion uh, that had come up in the security peg this week was, um, and I'm not sure how much you know about it, is that... Uh, the they're they are considering making a demo uh for mobile world congress of uh how how you could use um hardware virtualization to restrict access to the radio firmware okay um using something along the lines of of what the security peg has done um and it would be based on open wrt um okay so, has someone implemented? Who has implemented this? So, uh, they would be paying someone to implement it. Ah, oh, okay. But that's um, on short notice. I think the Mobile World Congress is in six weeks. Six or seven weeks. Yeah, it, it's it's going to be pushing it if they can do it. Um, but uh, yeah. So that is some okay. news. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, I haven't heard of it. Uh... Yeah, they just announced that at the security peg meeting last week, and um, and I had I had I had uh, given some other suggestions for things that they might also consider in in place of that um, if they chose not to, uh, but uh, we'll see what they end up doing. I think that's the the working idea though is is to do that. Okay. Uh, one other question, uh, I heard some rumor that uh, Purple is still working on some Purple WRT, uh, but uh, closed. Is this true, or do you know anything about it? That'd be the first I heard of it. <laughs> no, <laughs> okay. that, we, we call this the Purple WRT working group, but that's it. Where do, I was wondering, where did you hear that, or... Um, uh, I heard it from some guy, so I uh, found, found this pretty strange, this rumor, but uh, yeah... What do you, is there a particular uh like features or something that people said they were using? Because I I know there were, there was some talk that there that uh purple would fund some development, but they would give it all back to 
to open WRT itself. So there was this purple WRT repository uh, at GitHub. Uh, yep. And there was some development going on for some time, and I think it stopped some months or half a year ago or something like this, or a year ago. And yeah, that's really stopped. There's nothing. nothing. Oh. So the rumor was that some people are still working on this in the context of purple, and but no. um, closed. Okay. No. Okay. No, yeah, I, I, okay. I the, found this uh, pretty strange with the rumor, so... Uh. I, I can actually give you, the, give you the story. One of the things we talked about early on, very early on, when I started at Purple, was um, we would... Um, and this was partly my misunderstanding about kind of what people's goals were, was we would say, oh, then we would do like a kind of like a friendly fork of it, and then we would give it all back at the end, but it would just to work on projects. And... Um, uh there was uh i i set up the repository it was never used okay was, to the best of my knowledge it was never used once and okay it, right after i set it up it was like i remember kathy and uh it was matthew olivari at the time was just like yeah i don't we don't really have the resources to do this we want to work upstream totally and i'm like okay cool so um yeah that's certainly not not anything i know I, I'd be shocked if that happened. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's. But there is some talk that we would have some uh, fun, some development. Um, but that's all going to be talked about in this group. So. Okay. Mm. That that's interesting. That point. Uh, funnily enough, we were just talking this week with some of uh, some of my guys, and uh, mm -hmm. because they're they're just at the point of just starting to uh, be wanting to push some stuff uh, to open WRT, mm -hmm. and they they asked me this question um, that uh, you know they should be pushing it to purple or not, and I was very confused by why they were even considering there was such a notion as pushing it to purple. So what you've just said makes a lot of sense now because they definitely mentioned something about a purple fork. So yeah, the, uh, it'll be good for me to go back and say, yeah, that, that was just an old thing. It's it, just ignore it. Yeah, ignore it. I think I literally deleted the repository. It, I may have done that in the last couple of weeks because there was nothing going on there. And it was just like, this is confusing to people um, because nothing was going on in it. Um, so I, yeah, it, it should certainly all go to open WRT and they're welcome to come to this group and, you know, discuss any of their work. I, we'd love to hear about it too. So. Yeah. I, I, apologies for being late. It, it, this, okay. this, this just Friday, this time is it's not a, a bad time. Yeah, I know. It's... I, I'm pretty sure I could get some people to, to come along if there was any chance of us changing it to a, a even just another day of the week. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're, they're literally just sort of there's a lot of work going on, and 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 it, you should have noticed that there's a lot of people that have joined the mailing list at least. Mm -hmm. um, we did. We saw a few people. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, they will. There'll be at least <laughs> more than just me. Uh, I'll be able to get some people just coming along. So, uh, I if there's uh, if that if that's a possibility, it would be great to talk about it. Yeah, I think that's a good idea, Jeremy. This this time originally started. Um, it, it, Kathy uh, Giori, who's the the kind of the chair of this group, she she started it because there were Qualcomm people in the U.S. and it was and this was a time that worked for them. And uh, but it's not a bad idea to at the very least consider like maybe we can do this every other week at a different at a different time or something or a different day or something like that. At that would be least. great. Yeah. I mean, I, I know that there's some guys in our India office um, that, of oh. course, uh, if, if we were able to consider some other time uh, mm -hmm. at another time during the week, they, I'm sure they would uh, like to call in. I think that's a really great idea. I'm go I'll talk to Kathy about that, but I'm going to write that down as, as a discussion point that we, we mentioned, because I think that's a really good idea. Um, Uh, what what time would you su suggest? So for India, it's pretty hard to find something which yeah. works for uh, uh, yeah. U.S., uh, West Coast, Europe, uh, and India. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Um, I, I, but I mean, they, 
I know that they would be at least, um, you know, I, they they wouldn't be expecting something nine to five for for their time. Mm. But at least if it's not middle of the night, they would uh, <laughs> they'd be open to it. I mean, I'm sure very late for them. Um, even uh, potentially nine ten o'clock for them. Where would that stretch us to? I don't know. Maybe it still wouldn't even work. Um, yeah, it's a it's a tough one, especially it's getting into Asia. One. You're it's right. always difficult. It, but you know, it, we don't have to set on this time, and, and in fairness, we don't technically have to be a time that is even pleasant for the U.S. or Europe. In the sense of, you know, we could do once a month or something where it's just like, okay, this is Asia, a time that works re- really well for Asia, but not for everyone else. I mean, once in a while, it, it's. It's not an, an unreasonable idea that we sh- we should manage that because anything we do to increase participation and and just talk about the things we're doing and the work we're doing it's it's going to be valuable. So I mean, initially, uh, what's occurred to me is that there's no reason why they the, these uh, the meetings are recorded, right? And you you put them onto YouTube. Uh, we or did I make that up? Meetings- no, we do do that for we do occasionally have like these monthly or bi-monthly meetings. They're a little little less, I would say almost quarterly at this point. We do record those and put those on YouTube. The weekly ones we we post the notes of. Um okay. this this one happens to be recorded because we tend to use a different application for the weekly meetings. The one, it's um uh, uh, it's Microsoft Skype for Business or something. I don't know. That's just what Qualcomm had used. Um right. And we can't record with that one. This one, we can. This is the one I record with anyway. Um, but we can do that in the future if that's that's something that's valuable to people. Um. Let, me, let, me, let me go back um, and, you know, just maybe kick around those ideas and just see how, uh, how much interest there is. Um, I just know that, that certainly in the India office, those guys are very kind of... They just, they they just sort of want to suck up knowledge, and so mm-hmm. even being able to listen in and understand what we're talking about would be good. Um, so yeah, if that, awesome. if, even if that's an option, it's worth considering. Yeah, that's a possibility. Um, definitely, we can look into that. Um, it may also be be a situation where um, there's there's a couple of things I'm th- thinking of, and this is more just off the top of my head. One one thing is. You know, if they post to to either the the OpenWRT, the Devel mailing list on the official OpenWRT site, or the purple one um, about projects or anything, that's yeah. that would be really great because um, one of the things that Purple has tried to do and it's been somewhat of, somewhat difficult is is getting people across companies to work on projects. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah. and that has been a that is that is for whatever reason, it, particularly in OpenWRT, seems really difficult. I, I'm not exactly sure why. Um, but it, you know, if they have projects that are like, Hey, I need to, we, we want to get this thing done. It'd be a good place to do it. That's, uh, you might've seen the, the posts about, um, uh, maybe a week or two ago about auto updates. And that was more just, I brought it up and then all of a sudden we realized there's, there's tons of people that are actually interested in this topic. Yeah. Um, and that's really interesting. So, you know, anything we can do to do that's good. The other thing is on education. We kind of did some of that with OpenWRT Summit. I'm wondering if we, we would want to do like a um, – maybe like an education session on topics like we did with – like, like you know, Hauke, you did the the networking one, the networking stack. Um, you no, did, I think that was oh, uh, Stephen. Oh, you're right. Stephen did the networking stack. You did the uh, adding a um, – Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, one, yeah. A new architecture. Like those topics – Something that like would that. be, yeah. I think there would be a lot of interest in that, and I think that's something that I could certainly encourage uh, uh, one or two of my guys to actually even be prepared, maybe to to contribute as well. Actually, stand oh, yeah. up there and and do something. So, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah, the 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 big yeah. I think it's it one of those things that we always say in the OpenWRT community is the big thing is. Is documentation is not the strongest, and that's mm-hmm. and the it's difficult to educate people because a lot of it is, 
knowledge that people gain on their own. So any way we can we can like get that out there into like hard, clear explanations of these things would be would be very valuable. So I'll look into do to into that topic, um, and think about some. I'll probably send them some something to the mailing list and see you know what are some topics that people think we should we should educate people on um, that are missing. Yeah, I think uh, that'd be a good idea. Eric, have you seen the talk Felix gave at the Chaos Communication Congress? Uh, between... Yes. Oh, you have seen it. Okay. I have seen it. Yeah, that's a really great talk. He did. Uh, a little negative towards Qualcomm, but it was. It was... <laughs> That's okay. I mean, it was honest, and he had concerns, and it was good for him to share them. I it was it was good education too, about how it all. Yeah, works. I don't think of if it's only Qualcomm. Uh... They kind of got the brunt of it, in fairness. But yeah, he uh, he did. It was good. I liked his his talk. Um, yeah. Uh, Jeremy, are you working on the MIPS creator? Yes, well, ah. well, certainly my my team is, yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, so you know, there's a lot of a lot of those guys uh, that are working on it. You know, OpenWRT is is fairly new, um, mm -hmm. and even just going through the whole process of uh, just pushing stuff upstream, um, it's for a lot of them, it's uh, it's not something they've done before. So. Oh, uh, okay. We're, we're right now at, uh, just at tidying stuff up and just trying to work out, uh, you know, what what we should be doing. So mm -hmm. uh, expect very soon to start seeing some stuff. Um, the other one is uh, on the, um, you know, the test board. Um, mm -hmm. Very very keen to get more involved in that. Um, had discussions with uh, our test test guys we're, we're sort of doing similar bits and pieces and mm -hmm. so you know really keen to sort of uh, just get ourselves organized to be able to uh, contribute and participate as well mm -hmm. so you know even the, the the notion of adding boards being able to support some of that um, I know, I know we haven't been very visible up to, uh, to date, but it's, it's just about a timing thing. Uh, mm -hmm. So it, it's, yeah. it's all bubbling away. Uh, it will come very soon. Awesome. Yeah, we talked a little bit at the beginning of the call, I think before you had gotten here, about the, the testing co-op, um, we're calling it, uh, the, or board co-op, I'm sorry. The, uh, in that the first prototype, um, I had, I, I'm ordering all the pieces right now, um, okay. and they're coming in the mail. And uh, I have some boards from, or some, uh, they're like development units, I guess, from Qualcomm. And I'm going to get kind of like the first one set up. And we will then kind of start giving people access to it and kind of, uh, as we do that, we'll find some of the problems, some of the, some of what works, what doesn't. And then uh, certainly we'll start expanding that to other stuff. And, and it'll also be designed in a way that, you know, if you want to run your own, like that and make it remotely accessible you're certainly able to if you want to we're you know put just put your stuff into the purple one you're able to do that it we're going to do this in a way that is both uh re repeatable and scalable um so it, it can spread out and spread up so to speak right i mean i, th I think we're keen to to look at both of those options mm -hmm. um so yeah, let's wait and uh, see how you get on awesome. and uh, you get that, get those boards set up. Awesome. Yeah, we. I would have to say in the next couple of weeks we should start making some real progress on that. Once I get all the all the all the you know the hardware here, so should be good. Good. A lot of fun. A lot of fun Ooh. stuff there. Jeremy, are you planning to uh, add support for the MIPS creator to upstream OpenWRT, or do you have yeah, your own course. fork and want to use that, or what? What? No, the intention is absolutely push uh, push it upstream. Okay, so I would suggest that you start early. So even if uh, you just get it to boot or something like this, and most of the fancy extra hardware isn't working, so that you at least have something that is working and uh, if 
if you get some change requests from the community, so like, yeah, do it better the other way around or something like this, you can build up on this. So, so I would suggest you that you try early to send the patches, even if no one else has the hardware. So we have this strange uh, CPUs, uh, these SOCs from, I think, from Synopsis, this ARC CPU support. I think only they have the hardware for it, but it's supported in OpenWRT. So I would suggest you to send yeah, your first patch is early, so also when you have uh, smaller patches, and so we do not like to get a big patch bomb right. with lots of thousands of lines of code. So yeah, I heard this. Yeah, yeah. okay, I'll uh, I'll uh, I'll take that message back. So just you, you're saying uh, better to just start as soon as possible, even if it's just starting to push bits and pieces rather yeah. than one big lump. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that, that's a, that. I, Hauke can speak to that even better than I can, but I know that that was something that Qualcomm had had difficulties with too. Is is the the longer you wait, the harder it gets. Um, you know, they they can speak to that very well because they've gotten to the point where they're they're waiting. You know, to the point of years, and then they're trying to merge everything back together, and it's it's a ton of work. So. Yeah. Um, Definitely, the, the, uh, you know, Hauke knows it, it better than I do, but even I can say everything I've heard that that is, is more than, that is certainly the best practice is to get, get it up there as early as possible. It's no problem. It's just uh, half of your external uh, chips or parts are working or not even if it's just booting and Ethernet is working or something like this. That's totally fine. You can submit it. When you just say, yeah, this is working and we are working on the rest, then it's no problem. Okay. It's better than waiting so long and then you yeah, have well, lots of patches and then someone requests a change to the architecture or something like this and then you have to change everything and it gets harder when you wait longer. Right. And the other thing, uh, currently there's a planning for the next uh, release of OpenWRT. Uh, I don't know when exactly it will come out, so probably we will not. Normally we do not announce it uh, because we do not. Uh, 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 um, we do not uh, get get the time we planned the initially. Um, so at least it will be based on kernel 4.4. .4. So if you want to submit something, I would suggest you to base it on kernel 4.4. 4.4. .4. Okay. Yeah. So it's the recent one which was released some days ago. Okay, I will uh, I'll make a note and pass that back. When will you send out the uh, boards for the Kickstarter campaign? I uh, took part in it and. Uh... <laughs> ah well, we we literally at the. Uh, at the factory have uh, a sort of a pre-production run that is going through now um, they're going through Wi-Fi calibration um, <clears throat> some I we've we've got to get it through of course uh, the usual sort of certification approvals um, still targeting the uh, end of March or okay if, if possible earlier but um, that, that's the target. Okay. Our, our original notion was uh, to try and have them all ready for uh, uh, embedded world. Uh, but I, I, I think we will certainly have samples there, but uh, it won't be quite up to full, uh, full production. And uh, we, of course, there's always uh, getting enough uh, software complete and tidy so that it's uh, people are able to start doing what they need to do yeah so it's coming there's uh, lots lots of people busy uh, busy working away okay that's nice to hear good to hear all right well, that's all my stuff, I think. Anything else that uh, folks want to talk about? No, nothing from my side. Nothing from me. 
Awesome. Well, uh, thank you both for coming. It was great, great to have you uh, at the meeting, Jeremy. And, and we're cert and I, I'll talk to Kathy about, uh, and we'll talk about on the list about coming up with different times that that might work better for different areas of the world. That would be great. Definitely. And we'll, uh, yeah, well, I encourage everyone to you know, stay involved in the list, certainly, and that that, and we'll um, we'll keep everybody uh, in the loop on that, and see everyone next week, probably. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Eric. Thank you. Enjoy your weekend. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Mm -hmm.